In this video, I am going to talk to you about exposing your self-hosted services, what you should expose, what you shouldn't, and if you're going to, what you should be thinking about when you're doing so. A typical concept that we're going to cover, and that's port forwarding. And then we can talk about VPNs and other services such as Cloudflare tunnels and why you would use them, when you would use them, and just some key concepts around them all. Right, so this is my whiteboard, and I think this is just a key area where I'm going to just talk about um, the three topics, right? So the first one is port forwarding. And what we've got here is we've got the internet at the top here, we've got our router right here, and we've also just got our home network. Our ho the router is inside the home network as well. So I'll kind of just bring that down just like that. So on our home network, we've got our host server, right? This is where we do our self hosting and all our playing around. And as you can see here, we've got a website that we would like to expose to the internet. And we would also like to be able to connect to our server when we're not at home, right? And on our network, we've also just got some laptops, you know, right? Friends or family or whatever, that's just your devices on the network. Now, the first concept, port forwarding. How would we go about exposing this website, right? So the way port forwarding works is that we connect to our router, and what we will do is this. There will be a setting in our router where we would just go into port forward, and what we need to tell our router is, hey, look, this IP address, which is the server here, please expose to the internet, open up a port on the router and expose it to the internet, port 80. And now what our router is going to do is it's going to have that configuration now. We've, it's got that port forward and it's open, right? And port 80 is literally just HTTP, right? So what happens here is as soon as I've exposed this port, right? Port 80, I'm telling the router port 80 on this IP address, you'll get the service I want to expose, right? And what this means is if someone from the internet you know, they're browsing through the internet, they find this IP address or you tell someone the IP address, if they enter that IP address into their browser, they're going to come from the internet, they're going to hit the IP address, right, right, which leads to your router. And since they're connecting over port 80, which is just literally the HTTP, they will then get routed to your website. Okay, that's how it's working. They're going via an exposed port on your router. And this could be port 80, port 8080, whatever you decide to expose. But by default, H, uh, port 80, which is HTTP, you don't need to actually specify a port. You'll just go straight to that 80. Otherwise, if you had like a port exposed uh, on 8080, they would then actually have to add 8080 to the end of the IP address. Uh, your public IP address to connect to it. And then again, you don't need to actually have to have the IP address. You can have DNS and a domain name, um, and then they will connect through, through that way. But that's the general concept of port forwarding. You are exposing a port on your router to the internet and people connect to it. Now, what about SSH? We want to be able to SSH into our servers when we're not at home. So what, what are we going to do? We go into our router and we expose port 22. Okay, and then what that means is that anyone who attempts to connect to my public IP address on port 22, they can now attempt to connect to the SSH connection on my server. And what's the problem here, right? Anyone coming over the internet, connecting to and trying that IP address on port 22 can now try and connect to my server. Not just me, not just someone I tell, anyone and you might be sitting there well they need to know my ip address right and you're right they do need to know your ip address but do you know how easy it is to find people's public ip addresses that have exposed port 22 or any port for that matter so this is showed on right and what you can do is i can just type port 22 right and i can hit search and this is going to search all the devices that are on the internet that have port 22 exposed to the internet and here we go for example this one here if we click on this IP address, we can see that they've got exposed port 22. And what does this mean? We might be able to connect to it. And it also shows you all the vulnerabilities that they potentially have for you to try gain access to these or someone to gain access, right? It's illegal to do this, uh, to try and brute force your way into someone's uh, connection. But what I literally could do is now grab that IP address, jump onto my terminal and try SSH connect connecting to it. And then I could just brute force it, right? I can just be constantly trying to connect to it. And when it comes to SSH, there's a few things that you could do to mitigate this already, even if you have uh, exposed port 22 to the internet. So you could have uh, key authentication. So people have to use public uh, private key pairs to actually connect to the boxes rather than passwords. That's a really good way to stop that. But again, I'm just showing you how easy it is to find people that have exposed ports like that. So this is why you need to be mindful about these services you expose and how you expose them. Another one is if I just do port 
8080. Port 8080 is such a typical port that people use for self-hosting, right? And exposing services to the web. And if I search for that, so yeah, and just browsing around on port 8080, I think this is someone's like security camera uh, login prompt that they've just exposed to the internet. And now you could try brute force this. And if you got in, you can see their cameras. And what about services that you've exposed that don't have an authentication portal? You need to think about these things, right? If you, if you have ring cameras or, or whatever, whatever you're exposing to the internet, and if it's not behind authentication, anyone can access this. And it's not, they need to know my IP address. No, your IP address and the ports you expose are so easily found that you need to be very mindful of this. And people do, they will literally just go through all of this and just check and find any things that are open and they will make their way through your system, right? And then coming back to the drawing, now, if they, the, the issue, the big issue here is that if they do get in via SSH, now they're on your home network, right? Now, can they try and connect to your home PC, right? Did that, does this server already have keys to authenticate with these? Now they're in this server, right? They're making your way, their way through your home network. That's why a lot of thought needs to go into when you expose a service. Should you be doing it that way? Now, just hosting a website, sure, you know, what you're exposing your public IP address, but if that doesn't worry you, then sweet, you can go ahead and port forward on port 80, or if you're, you know, playing, if you're hosting a, a game server or whatever, then sure, right? But you just need to be mindful, whatever you're seeing, the rest of the world can see as well. And just because there might be a login prompt there, there's still vulnerabilities, right? There's ways to get past that and bypass it by brute force attacks and just any sort of vulnerabilities that application may have. So how do you mitigate this and what's another option? So now let's talk about VPNs, right? Let's, let's talk about the second option, which is a VPN and no doubt you've heard of a VPN, but I'm just going to explain to you why this might be a better option. That's what, let's say we are already exposing our service, our website on port 80, right? We're happy to have that port forwarded for, you know, whatever reason, we're just, we're going to have that open and people can access it. But what about SSH now, right? So I've just made a new one here. Let's say this is my laptop, right? This is a laptop that I'm using. And when I'm at home, I can connect to all these services on, you know, my network. I can connect to my server just fine and I can, you know, remote desktop or whatever to these just fine because I'm on my home network. I can access the IP addresses just fine. But now I want to be able to SSH to the server when I'm away from home, but I don't want to expose it to the rest of the world. What can I do? And that's where a VPN comes in, right? So what we could do is we want to host a new service on here, which is our VPN. And what we do is we add a device to the VPN, right? So let's, and I've covered this, I've got a video where you can check it out on setting up WireGuard, for example. And we're going to set up, you know, WireGuard, which is what this VPN is. This laptop has been added as a client to the VPN, right? So it has everything it needs to authenticate. Now, again, I can SSH to this box just fine, but the whole idea of this, I am now leaving home, right? I am out on the internet. <laughs> I am off my home network. Now I want to SSH to my server, right? How do I go about doing this? Now what I need to do is I can just copy this, paste this, and we need to make another port forward. Yes, we're port forwarding, but in this case, what we're doing is we're port forwarding the VPN, the WireGuard port. And I believe off the top of my head, that's like 51820 or something. And what happens here is that I turn on my VPN, right? to connect to my server. And what happens is that my VPN client on the laptop will go, it knows where to reach out to, it knows to hit this public IP address. And it's not hitting it on port 80, it's hitting it on 51820. And what's gonna happen here is that this port is only going to be serving authenticated users. I'm gonna make a connection attempt to the VPN. And with this VPN trying to connect to the server, it's got the keys to authenticate itself, right? It's going, hey, look, here's my badge or here's my key. I'm allowed to connect to you. And what's happened here is that we've made that connection. We've now pretty much acting as if we're on our home network. And now we can access everything again on the local IP addresses like we would. Nothing has been exposed to the internet. No, none of these services have been exposed to the internet. That what's happening here is we've pretty much just jumped back on our home network while we're out and about. That's what's happened here. We're not exposing these services to the internet. We've just allowed our laptop to connect back onto our home network using the VPN. Now, the third concept I want to cover is using something like Cloudflare, and that's like a Cloudflare tunnel. And I've got a video on this as well, so make sure to go check that out. And it's pretty much the way that I expose a lot of my services to the internet. And the way this works is that rather than having the VPN, let's just change this, what we would have is 
when we're setting up a Cloudflare tunnel, we just have like a Docker container, for example, or a binary that runs the Cloudflare tunnel, right? So that's running on the server. And I go into detail in the video, so I'm just gonna quickly gloss over this, but what happens here is that this Cloudflare tunnel will reach back out through the internet. It doesn't need any ports forwarded or anything like that. And it connects to Cloudflare and this tunnel is connected to our account, right? And what's going to happen there is it's going to expose the services for us, right? We're going to tell Cloudflare um, in the zero trust configuration in the internet and in the in the app, and we're going to say, hey, look, this Cloudflare tunnel, we're going to give it an IP address and we're going to give it a port to expose. And this all goes via, and it's all via like proxied via Cloudflare, right? Cloudflare will expose that service for us. And what happens there is that you know, we haven't had to open up our router for anything. Cloudflare already has a lot of protection in it. It has a like DDoS protection. It knows when you're getting a lot of traffic. Uh, if you've exposed a service that has a log on, it will know when someone's trying to brute force it and it will lock those users out. You get a lot of benefit from using a service such as Cloudflare and that's why I use it. And again, go check out that video if you're keen on going down that route. So what was this even all about, right? What I'm trying to get you to understand, and I know I kind of just glossed over these concepts because if you really want to understand a VPN more in detail and all of that stuff, go watch some dedicated videos on them. But the, the key thing I'm trying to explain here is understand before you expose your service, right? Oh, it's convenient for me to be able to access my security cameras when I'm away from home. So I'm just going to port forward it so I can access it. Yes, okay, but now can everyone else on the in the world can see it as well, right? These are some things you just need to understand. If you're going to port forward it and you don't have like, you know, firewall protection on your router to only prevent certain locations from accessing it, I'm just talking about a very open port forward. You just need to understand that everyone else in the world can also access that. Maybe that's when you just use a VPN instead or something like Cloudflare. This even goes for services like Nextcloud or whatever, right? Yes, Nextcloud all have a login. And like you had seen on that page, there's vulnerabilities in everything. If you don't update your Nextcloud, someone might be able to bypass that authentication and now they're in. So there's just a lot of things to consider when you go about exposing your services. And if you are stuck and you're trying to figure out how is the best way to expose your service and, you know, some key things to consider uh, that I haven't answered here, jump to the comments or at the Discord and there will be a link in the description for that. And I'll, we're more than happy to have a conversation and to help you understand it for yourself. But yeah, this video was more just a general discussion around all of this. Uh, again, any questions, jump to the Discord. It's way easier to have a conversation there. More than happy to help you understand these key concepts more. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.